Christian Gonzalez is the crown jewel of the New England Patriots cornerback depth chart, but will another rookie prove to be more than his draft status in 2023? Stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful. Welcome to the Locked On Patriots podcast, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts to get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I am your host, Mike DeBate, and I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on Twitter at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. You can also show some love to that Twitterverse by following the Locked On Patriots account as well at LO underscore Patriots. And of course, Pats fans, I thank you all for joining me here today and for making us your first listen today. As always, I want to begin each show by giving a special shout out to all of you Locked On everydayers out there. You Locked On loyalists, you make Locked On Patriots possible by spending time with us here on the pod each and every day. My unending gratitude to you. I'm always honored and always humbled by your support. And Pats fans, with training camp on the horizon, we're going to continue our look into the Patriots' positional depth charts. Yesterday, took a look at the safeties. Today, we're looking at the cornerbacks. And this cornerback depth chart for your New England Patriots is going to be among the most watched, maybe even the most scrutinized areas on the roster heading into training camp. And that is all due to the selection of former Oregon cornerback Christian Gonzalez with the number 17 overall pick in the first round. But the Patriots weren't done there. They bolstered their backfield a little bit more by drafting not just one but two additional cornerbacks, Michigan State's Amir Seed and Jackson State's Isaiah Bolden. They were taken in the sixth and seventh rounds, respectively, and they're going to join incumbents on this roster, including Jonathan Jones, Marcus Jones, Jack Jones, not that Jones, the other Jones, Miles Bryant, Sean Wade, Quandre Mosley, and Rodney Randall Jr. That's a talented but crowded depth chart. And whether it's unfortunate or not, New England may be forced to lean on that depth in light of the recent legal troubles of second-year defensive back Jack Jones. We all hope that everything works out, both for Jack and for the team, but we have to at least entertain the idea, folks that he may be forced to miss some time from the field. In fact, it's a possibility that Jack may even be released. So out of respect for the legalities of that situation, I'm not going to speculate further on Jack Jones' situation until we have more information. But there is one thing that I'm not timid on admitting, and you can probably figure it out. Yeah, that's the fact that Christian Gonzalez is going to be the Patriots' number one cornerback, and it's going to happen this year. I've said this many times here on the pod. I'll say it again, Christian has the chance to become the Pats' most prolific perimeter corner since the departure of Stephon Gilmore. Capable of proving himself in so many duties, he's expected to align along the boundary. He's well-sized at 6'2", 200 pounds. He's got the height and the length to match up against opposing teams' top receivers on the outside. That's where he's going to be primarily, folks. You might see him maybe take the occasional snap in the slot, but I don't think it's going to be too much. In a game setting, Christian is at his best in man coverage. That's what made him the 17 overall pick in the NFL draft, one of the top corners coming out of this class. And his abilities in that area, in my opinion, are unmatched. And he's going to show that on the field. But he also has a great ability and great discipline to never take his eyes off the quarterback. Because he's maintaining eye contact with the quarterback at all times, it makes him a potential asset in zone as well. So Christian is multifaceted, and I think he's really going to revolutionize the way this cornerback group is going to be able to play, not just this year, but in many years to come. His performance during training camp is ultimately going to determine whether or not he starts on opening day. I believe that will be the case, but some will make the argument, and maybe correctly, that Christian needs at least a little more seasoning before he's thrown out as the opening day starter. But I will say this, even if he doesn't get the starting nod on opening day, Christian Gonzalez is going to be the top option at this position much sooner rather than later. 
And I do believe it will happen in the first quarter of this season if it's not on opening day. So, folks, keep that under your hat when it comes to Christian Gonzalez. I know there's a lot to be excited for, and we're all excited to see him on the field. But Gonzo is not the only rookie cornerback on this team. Amir Speed is going to make his case for a spot on this roster. But the one guy that I'm watching was the Patriots' last pick in the draft. And whatever you do, folks, do not call this man the Pats version of Mr. Irrelevant. And the man I'm talking about is Isaiah Bolden. And even though his place among the remaining 11 draftees was the final spot, and by the way, folks, keep in mind that this draft class was the largest the Patriots have had since 2010. His skill set, far from irrelevant. In his second Alaska last collegiate season at Jackson State, his first year as a Tiger, he played in 10 games, totaled eight tackles, also became a dominant kickoff returner. He averaged 36.9 yards per return with two kickoffs returned for touchdowns. During his senior season, he played in 13 games, 44 tackles, two and a half of which went for loss and a fumble recovery. And even after excelling as a special teamer in college, he still continued to dazzle the scouts. Ran a 4.33 40-yard dash at Jackson State's Pro Day. Yet, a lot of people were surprised that he remained on the draft board until late day three when New England scooped him up with pick number 245. And some might say Isaiah's facing an uphill battle. After all, attempting to earn a roster spot as a late-round draft choice that can be a daunting task, especially with the laundry list of cornerbacks the Patriots have currently on this roster. But Isaiah is finding additional motivation in earning yet another unforeseen distinction, and that is being the only player among the 2023 NFL draft class to be selected from a historically black college or university, or an HBCU. 259 members selected in this class, Isaiah was the only one from an HBCU. In fact, his college coach and NFL legend, Deion Sanders, we all give a tip of the cap to and hope for a speedy and complete recovery for him and that his medical situation goes absolutely as best as possible. Express some disappointment that Isaiah was the only choice from an HBCU saying that he was ashamed that other teams opted not to explore such a talent pool. And I happen to agree with him wholeheartedly there. But Isaiah's never one to shy away from a challenge. Isaiah appreciated what Sanders had to say, but he also is adding them to a growing mountain of motivational factors that he's going to have in 2023. If Isaiah wants to make this roster, he's projected as either a depth corner or a special teams contributor, but he's going to face significant competition. We've already established that Christian Gonzalez is the Patriots' future at lockdown corner. Jack Jones, the legal troubles still persist. We don't know a lot about that or what that means for his status. That means that Isaiah is going to be competing with guys like Jonathan Jones, Miles Bryant, Marcus Jones, Sean Wade, Rodney Randall, and even Amir Speed, who's his fellow rookie. That's going to mean that a battle for earning a roster spot is going to be difficult. But Bolden's ambition can really be cultivated from his desire to prove the doubters wrong. Should he need a little extra inspiration? Isaiah may follow the example of the favorite player of our guest today. That favorite player, folks, is Brandon Bolden. That happens to be Isaiah's cousin. You all know about the time that Brandon spent here in New England, currently a member of the Las Vegas Raiders, spent the first six seasons here with New England, won two Super Bowls with the team. And, of course, we all know that he is the favorite of our guest today, Mr. Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports. Now, replicating his cousin's success, I don't think is something that Isaiah is going to be fanatical about. It's going to serve more as a model than a motivation. But I will say this, Bolden's desire to become a capable pro within the New England Patriots system is unquestionably intense. It's I will, and it's anything but irrelevant. So this kid is going to make a strong push. And when it's time to cut this roster down to 53... Do not be a bit surprised to see Isaiah Bolden among those still standing and ready to start the season as a member of your New England Patriots. Patriots fans, we are just scratching the surface when it comes to anything and everything related to the Patriots cornerback room. Who is going to be the top option in the slot? Who is going to be on the other side of Christian Gonzalez on the perimeter and the top two options on this team? We called in the big guns for some assistance, and my good friend Thomas Murphy of E2GSports.com is going to pop in here in just a little bit to continue our pre-training camp look at the Patriots cornerback depth chart heading into 2023. Keep it right here as Murph joins the pod in just a moment, right here on Locked On Patriots, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy Football host Vinny Iyer 
to provide you with some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, let's see who Vinny has picked out for us on this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. When on the clock for the first overall pick in 2023 fantasy drafts, it's okay to get downright giddy about doing the gritty. And that means picking Vikings wide receiver Justin Jefferson. He is a guaranteed fit. Over the past two seasons, Jefferson has led the league in both receptions and receiving yards. He will remain a dominant number one and target monster. Jefferson is a guaranteed fit to ignite the rest of your fantasy football lineup toward winning success. And folks, Vinny Iyer from Locked On Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. It's the same thing with your vehicle. With eBay Guaranteed Fit and over 122 million parts and accessories for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Brakes, batteries, alternators, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they're going to make sure that it's the right fit for your car. Because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part you need for your vehicle the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating if your ride needs a little fixing up. Because everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away with eBay Guaranteed Fit. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. Let's ride eBay Guarantee Fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Patriots fans, thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. And today on the pod, we continue our deep dive into the positional previews. Talking cornerbacks today, folks. And what better way to delve into a position that's very near and dear to my heart than bringing in one of our very favorites here on Locked On Patriots, my good friend, the Count of Murphy Fisto himself, the legendary Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports. Murph, that chair is not just embroidered for you anymore. It is permanently affixed to the ground. You are a fixture here on Locked On Patriots, but I love having you on, and thank you so much for coming to me in friendship today, Don Murph, to talk about a position that you know is very, very important. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, it, this is it's it's important to the team, and more importantly, it's important to Mike. Mm, absolutely, you know, I'm sure. I know Bill definitely is very, very much in tune to that. He's sitting in his office in one Patriots place right now, going, "Yep, that debate. We got to get the counterback situation squared away for him." And what better gift? He drafts Christian Gonzalez, right. the guy I wanted in Patriot Blue. Then it happened. It we didn't think happened. was ever going to happen. No, we didn't. We really we didn't and truly did not. Murph and I actually started scoffing at some of the uh, mock drafts that were sent yep. in with Christian Gonzalez being here and saying, yeah, you know what? Lofty goal, but I don't think the Patriots are going to pull we, it off. Right. We crazy. under we understood you had to draft the board that was in front of you, but, you know, you, you stop reaching here. This ain't going to happen. He's going to be gone by pick nine. <laughs> what, what, what happened? <laughs> Divine intervention, Murph. Yeah. You believe in that sort of thing, but... Bottom line, what this does with the choice of Christian Gonzalez at number 17 overall, and I talked about this a little bit to open the show today, it essentially puts the Patriots in a position where they do have that shutdown option Yeah. now in this lineup, something they haven't really had since Stefan Gilmore left. I know you can say J.C. Jackson was a guy that came in that was a top corner, but I think J.C. was a little bit more of a ball hawk than he was a shutdown corner. That's in no way a disparage to J.C. Jackson, who I think is a very talented cornerback, but different styles, different types of roles on this team. Murph, the one thing the Patriots do have a lot of when it comes to the cornerback position is options. This is a deep group right now. I think the Patriots will roster these guys deeply, meaning at least five, I believe six, will probably make the cut when all is said and done. The perimeter is a question mark right now. Obviously, the legalities of Jack Jones are going to determine exactly how that's all going to play out. But assuming Jones is in the mix and assuming he's on this roster, he's probably your top option when it comes to perimeter. You've got Jalen Mills in the mix. You've got Jonathan Jones in the mix. You've got Sean Wade. A lot of guys could play the perimeter and could be that bookend to Christian Gonzalez. In your estimation, who best fits that role in 2023? Well, you know, you, 
the best guy out there is Jonathan Jones, but I don't want to weaken two spots. I really don't. Jones does most of his damage on the inside, and that's where he's at his best. He's, it yeah. really is. And I'm sure that this went into his re-signing. But if it isn't Jack Jones, if for some reason he isn't here, he's on the non-football list in in some way shape or form or god forbid they end up having to cut him it's jalen mills jalen mills yeah. is going to be kicking back out to, out there i think it's definitely on to something there when you're uh, when you're talking about jalen mills look bottom line i know his re-signing in new england was predicated heavily and these are yeah. jalen's own words we're not right. trying to kind of fit a square peg into a round hole here jalen said that his re-signing with the team was heavily predicated on him playing more safety this year and that's where he made his biggest impact i talked about this a little bit yesterday here on the pod when i talked about the safety position and how that was going to shake out he was able to do a great job at safety in 2020 for the philadelphia eagles his final season there coming into that uh there was a lot to uh, uh to like when it came to uh, jalen mills job so he's someone right. that can play that position but as a corner he was a very serviceable option as a starter on the opposite side. You may really see a significant uptick in snaps based on what happens with Jack Jones. Last year, 31 tackles, five pass breakups, two interceptions, and in the process, he held opposing quarterbacks to completing only 27 of 45 passes for 333 yards when he was targeted. This is someone that can definitely come in and play that role opposite Christian Gonzalez. I happen to agree with you that Jalen Mills will kick out I still think Jonathan Jones gets a shakeout here. And the reason why Probably. I say that is because of the leadership ability that he brings to the table. I think the Patriots are looking for someone to step up and take that elder statesman role in right. the defensive backfield. I praised Adrian Phillips, did it yesterday here, have done yep. it consistently. All you everydayers out there know why. But bottom line, I think in a lot of ways, Jonathan is taking on that leadership role, that, oh, without a doubt. that mentor role that Devin McCourty took on. And you heard in his own words when he talked about mentoring Christian Gonzalez and working very closely with him, these guys are starting to develop a synergy. And you know as well as I that it's not a requirement for the two corners, the opposite bookends, to really have a solid relationship. They can right. work in silos, but when they do it, it makes it all that much stronger. And Jonathan said so when we spoke to him earlier on during mandatory minicamp. And he says, it's not what you say, it's what you do. You know, he's had a good group of guys around him. He mentioned Devin McCourty. He mentioned Pat Chung, mentioned Dante Hightower. These yep. guys consistently show Jonathan what you need to do when you're the veteran in the room. And yep. you need to take a bunch of young players and make them into what they need to be. That to me as is worth I, Yeah, I think that's worth almost as much as statistical competence. And, and look, he can do it. You know, Jones he performed can. adequately on the opposite side of the uh, the perimeter last year, surrendered 47 catches on 87 targets. Um, so, you know, he's not going to be a shutdown. He's not going to be a ball hawk. But I think no. he has the speed to be able to hang with some of the top-level receivers. And You're right. I agree with you. In a perfect world, he's your slot guy. He's yeah. the guy that's on the interior. That's where he's at his best. But if the Patriots are uncertain about Jack Jones – I think Jonathan Jones gives them the most gravity in terms of being able to put out a unit there that's not only ex not only talented but also experienced as well. So yeah, what folks have to realize is that New England's um, defensive back group was was one of the best in the in the league last year. You know, those that are just tuning in and, and might have missed last year's uh, last year's team. You know. Uh, bringing back Jones in free agency was fantastic. Drafting Gonzalez just made this room that much more formidable and you know it there are so many different moving pieces that you know i realize that we're focusing on the 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 cornerbacks this year but there's so many different moving pieces to this defensive backfield that bill's going to be able to figure out you know a certain way you know anyway no matter who they're facing um you know who who they're going to be able to shut down and and who they're going to be who they're going to need to to maybe pay a little bit more attention to so these labels are going to change from week to week and that's if jack jones is is not a part of the equation yeah and i'm glad that you mentioned jack because i do want to wrap up our conversation on perimeter corners with a question on jack jones 
you've been one of his biggest proponents on the field yep. in terms of what this kid can do and his skill set. Unquestionable that he opened a lot of eyes last year with a very high octane style play, yep. um, an ability to rise to the occasion and a ball hawking ability to pick off some of the more prolific quarterbacks in the league. When you pick off Aaron Rodgers, you're raising eyebrows without any question about it. And yep. he did that last year. 13 games, 454 defensive snaps as a rookie. So the Patriots clearly had a lot of high hopes for this kid. They didn't stash him on the bench or try to bring him along. He was out there in the mix right away. 30 tackles, six passes defended, and one forced fumble. One recovery and two interceptions. And, of course, the aforementioned one that he returned for a touchdown. How important is it to the Patriots' defensive backfield that Jack Jones sees the field this year? In other words, how much of a disadvantage are the Patriots going to be at if he's either ineligible to play or not allowed to play because right. of his legal difficulty? Um, yeah, it, it, it's going to – I don't want to say significant. Mm -hmm. You know, with the, with the addition of Gonzalez this year, I, I don't see much of a drop-off if Jack isn't there for the entire season. The, the Patriots are routinely one of the best pass defenses in this league. You know, they mm -hmm. rank first in EPA and dropbacks over the last five years and second over the last ten. Bill's going to figure it out. He's mm -hmm. going to figure this out. Um, if Jack's there, great. If he's not there, you know, it, it, it's still, this is still a defensive backfield that, that uh, oppositions are going to need to fear. They're going to need to game plan around. And I'm sure by and and I'm by no means putting Gonzalez's feet to the fire here. I know he has a lot to absorb as a cornerback. It's it's even it's even more so than maybe anybody else on that um on that defensive side of the ball in this system. But uh he he'll get up to speed. These guys will get him up to speed and he'll be out there. And uh, he'll be he'll be uh, stirring the sauce, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, the stirring the sauce or the straw that stirs the drink, whichever colloquialism mm -hmm. you want to use, folks. That's exactly what Christian Gonzalez this kid is going to mean. Yeah, to this perimeter. This kid is and really he is, it. He yeah. really is, man. He, he's just a the smooth operator. Mm -hmm. He is. Yeah, nice Sade reference there. I like that. Yeah, thank you. But in any case, folks, the perimeter looks to be set at least on one side with Christian Gonzalez, who's going to take on that other side. Still a matter of conjecture. Murph and I have given you our opinion on what that will be, but Patriots are also pretty stacked in the slot. Three players that are more than capable of playing the slot at a high level. A pair of Joneses and a guy that Murph's been touting for quite some time here on Locked On Patriots. A little bit of dirt on the uniform last year, but does that mean that he's going to be on the outside looking in when it comes to the slot for the Patriots? Going to talk Marcus Jones, Jonathan Jones, and Miles Bryant when we continue our discussion on cornerbacks right here on the Locked On Patriots podcast, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Patriots fans, thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us here on Locked on Patriots. And again, tomorrow here on the pod, we continue our discussion on Patriots positional previews, and we're going to be joined by the resident voice of reason. Our good friend Steve Balistrieri closes out the weekend style here. We're going to be talking Patriots off-ball linebackers and what it means for the Patriots defensive line. So don't miss that, folks. Follow, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. But today, the legend himself, the Count of Murphy Fisto, the Green King of Sting, has joined me here once again. It was so nice. We asked him back twice, my good friend Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports. And Murph, we talked a little bit in the previous segment about the Patriots' perimeter corners. Obviously, yep. Christian Gonzalez is the crown jewel. We've got guys like John Jones, Jalen Mills, Sean Wade, a lot of different guys that could slot in on the other side as a perimeter corner. But we all know that the Patriots also place a great deal of importance in slot cornerback play. Jonathan Jones, since he's been here, has yep. been one of the best slot corners in the league, but he had to take on some additional perimeter duties last year. Marcus Jones was drafted as a potential slot weapon purely because of his speed and his field savvy. And Miles Bryan has done a pretty good job holding down the fort in the slot. Yep. I know a lot of Patriots fans are going to grimace at that, but go back, take a look at some of the film, take a look at the statistics, and you'll see that Miles has been better than he's been worse. So my question to you, my friend, 
Who is yep. their primary slot weapon? Who should be aligning their game one against the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday, September 10th at Gillette Stadium? Oh, it's Jonathan Jones. He, he's he's the primary. He's the number one. Um, he he's the guy that that uh, you know you who doesn't get the, the the Pro Bowl votes because nobody votes for the slot guy. But if they did, you know, he would be there <laughs> year in and year out because right. that's how important he is. Otherwise, he would not be here. He wants to be here. That's that's one of the. I think he took less money to stay than he probably was offered out there. Uh, but he he enjoys this environment he enjoys um the 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 patriots way of doing things uh he, it's very comfortable for him he knows that he's going to be a leader in this locker room with everything that's been subtracted over the past couple of years and uh and he's the man yeah i agree with you he definitely is the man and look i don't think there's any question that jonathan jones feels is most comfortable in the slot and plays his best football in the slot but yep. we all know that extenuating circumstances may force him to the outside more right. than maybe he wants to see, maybe even more uh, than the fan base wants to see at this point. That may leave the Patriots with a couple of different choices. And that, to me, puts either the onus on now second-year phenom Marcus Jones or good old reliable Miles Bryant in the backfield. Right. When you look at these two players, if Jonathan Jones is forced to the outside more often than not, Who's getting the majority of the snaps at the slot? Is it going to be Marcus or is it going to be Brian? I believe it's going to be Marcus in mm. the end. That's 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 where that's where it's it's trending. That's where uh, it's um, you know there, there's always going to be that rotation, but I just think to to get that second year leap. You, you've got to you've got to throw him into the deep end of the pool. I really do think that you have to do that as well. And look. Marcus is committed to being a defensive back. I know a lot of people want to see him align at a wide receiver position because of what he did against Buffalo last year. I know people love to see it'll him. happen, you know. Yeah, that's situational. Um, I know people love what he can do on special teams, especially in the punt return game. So many people look at him as a multifaceted weapon. You want to take a look at a unicorn, folks. Matthew Judon talking about the defensive unicorns. Marcus Jones is one of them. I mean, he, he truly is. is a guy that can just do everything. The first in 75 years to have a receiving touchdown, a punt return touchdown, and an interception return for a touchdown in the same season. That's a right. special player. And you want to be sure that he's going to be on the field wearing your uniform for a number of years to come. But he's a very good cornerback. And I think people forget that because he can do so many things well. People look at it and say, okay, well, you don't have to really have him on the field as a corner. He can do a number of different things. He saw the field for only 37% of the Patriots' defensive plays last year, but as both a perimeter and a slot corner, what, 39 tackles, seven passes defensed, fumble recovery, and then the interception return for 69 yards on a touchdown. And he did it against the Cincinnati Bengals. Right. That's not an easy right. offense to read. That's not an easy offense to read. Joe Burrow, got a present for you. Exactly. And Marcus Jones was able to do that. So his speed, his ability to recognize routes, um, and that's one of the reasons why he's such an effective situational mm -hmm. receiver, I think gives him the edge. And I think he is going to be your slot guy for the future. But that also leads me to Miles Bryant and that Miles is a guy that's maligned a lot here. I think he's unfairly maligned. And uh, I do like Miles and I think that he's got a good amount of skill set to bring to this team. Do you believe he's an odd man out or is he a real key member of the team this year with what they need to do? No, he's a key member. He's mm -hmm. a key member. No matter what happens with Jack Jones, he's a key member. Yeah. He's somebody that, uh, that Bill knows and trusts uh, for whatever reason. And, uh, and he knows the system and, and he, he will be a, a serious part of this rotation. Mm, he will be as well. Don't forget folks, Miles Bryan in the time that he's seen in the slot has also aligned as the third safety in the Patriots' yep. customary three safety set. I know they've got competent guys back there. We talked about the safeties yesterday. They've got your Brill Peppers, Kyle Duggar, Adrian Phillips, even Joshua Bledsoe's got a chance to yeah. make this uh, this roster. They've got bodies in that backfield that can do the job. 
But right. ultimately, <clears throat> Miles Bryant can give them that versatility and maybe give him a leg up on the competition that a lot of his peers in the cornerback room simply do and not have. Just just to throw Mapo in there too, it just helps with the mix mm-hmm. and it allows Bill to do more in the, in the back end of it. Yeah. It really and truly does. So if you see Miles Bryant on this roster this year, folks, and you see him on the field, don't grimace. He's usually in position to do what he needs to do. Um, Yeah, I think in that regard, I don't necessarily know if he'll continue to be your primary option in the slot, but he'll be a valuable option in the slot. And who knows who who, who else pops? You know, Bolden could pop. Never bet against a Bolden. Uh, Amir (laughs) Speed could pop. You know, speed kills. So, you know, you the, these these options are out there. We've, there's a lot of things to play out here. We were able to touch on on quite a few, uh, but you know nothing's set in stone yet. Yeah, nothing is set in stone yet, and that's why we try to do these positional previews before training camp to let you know what's on our mind. And then the Patriots can go out there on the field and prove us wrong, folks. No, we're only kidding. Sometimes we are right, and hopefully in this case we are. But what are your thoughts on the cornerback position, folks? What do you believe? the Patriots will look like in this positional depth chart who are your top two perimeters who are the guys that are manning the job in the slot and who are the surprises that you expect to see on this roster Murph mentioned one earlier I talked about him in the opening segment keep your eye on Isaiah Bold and he just happens to be Brandon's cousin we're probably dating ourselves here but as the late great Jim Croce would say you don't tug on Superman's cape you don't spit into the wind and you don't bet against the Bolden. Those are the three rules, folks. Now, (laughs) we'll see if I'm right on that. And anyone that liked that reference, give us a thumbs up or a plus one down in the comments section. We always appreciate your feedback. But but what can I say? You open the weekend style here on Lock on Patriots. You almost take us into the weekend, but gave us some valuable wisdom and counsel on the cornerback position. It's a position near and dear to my heart. In my younger, thinner, and faster days, it's the position that I played. So I'm very much always in Not tune me. to what the Patriots did in corners. Um, before I let you go, bud, what can we look forward to? do this weekend from the great voice the great pen of thomas murphy and uh give us a reminder about what's happening here on monday once again we uh, um well <laughs> well of course you can find me over there at e2g sports i got some red Sox stuff coming out later today um i i'm keeping my promise and i have my roster projection uh set to to air tomorrow morning you can check that out there of course Next week, um, we'll be back on with one Patriots place. Classy Claire will be back. Uh, so, and and a surprise guest maybe. And um, that that isn't this guy. He's he's just breathing a sigh of relief. Um, but please, folks, uh, Monday's coming up quicker than you know. Get those questions in. You want to be heard on the air? You want you want to know? Pick our brain. You you want us to mix it up even more than we already do? Get the questions in. And we'll pick the best ones and and uh, and talk to you about it. On Monday. Absolutely, folks. We always fresh batch each and every week, and we always appreciate you guys sending in some of the great questions that we receive. And Murph and I will definitely be breaking those down here on Mailbag Monday. So get those questions in. But in the meantime, don't forget here on Locked On Patriots tomorrow, Steve Balistrieri, the resident voice of reason here on Locked On Patriots, is going to come on and help us talk some D line linebackers off the ball. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll take you into the weekend in style as we always do. And don't forget, folks, Murph's 53-man roster projection. Check it out on E2G Sports. You'll never be disappointed anytime Murph puts pen to paper. It's always a fun read, and I, for one, cannot wait to see what's in store. But in the meantime, it is comedy gold. Absolutely. We were called pretty good comedians, uh, you know, earlier this week. So were we? Yeah, I'm going to hang my head on that. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) We're we're here to entertain. Funny. Funny how, Murph? How am I funny? (laughs) Why I'm usual? I make you laugh. (laughs) My clown. Yeah. Unfortunately, I just can't go any further with that impression. But if you've seen the movie. You know the rest, folks. We're having a ball here, and we always do every time Murph drops by. So get those questions in, but don't forget to check us out here tomorrow and each and every day here on Locked On Patriots. On behalf of the great Count of Murphy Fisto himself, the legendary Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports, I'm Mike DeBate reminding you to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you back in here tomorrow on Locked On Patriots. Never count out a Bolden.